Hello, um, hello? Anybody there? Okay, it's been quite a long time since the last review, and unfortunately I don't have the time anymore, or I don't feel I necessarily have the time to do these on a weekly basis anymore, so I'm just going to leave the rest of the league seasons in this ongoing project to season-long reviews. And this was an important season, so I decided, whatever, let's just do it for a whole season review, and this is how everything went down. I started the season with a 3-0 victory over FK Spaj Cernica. However, the next game against newly promoted Rocker Bocker, Ibrahim Kamara was sent off and Rocker Bocker won 2-0 with their new signing Rami Hakkinen making his debut and scoring the second goal. Our new signing RV Kiro came on. Kiro, a 34-12, who was added to the squad to add some depth. Next came over against Vishun FC in the cup again, a team we'd already faced in the cup a few seasons ago. And we absolutely thrashed them in the first leg, winning 6-0. Next up were Arcanta in the league, who had just been recently relegated from the Ultimate League top flight, and as such had started a full-scale rebuild. However, Knights lacked the skills to get past their goalkeeper, Bojan Jaric, and missed out on a crucial three points in our fight for promotion. This was a key season for us. At this point of the time, I expect this team to be up there fighting for promotion. However, surprise package FC Dragos were leading the way, and on a day for Knights to forget, we just didn't manage to get past their goalkeeper, and the game finished nil nil. After getting a 6 0 victory over Yishin FC to get us back to winning ways, we then beat Sudinima Bucharesti 2 0, a team which has just come down from the top flights and are finding things tough under their new manager. The next game saw us beat Island Geishas 3 0 in the cup. However, we were then held to a 0-0 draw against Kyoshia's Killers in the league, which was a game we really needed to win to stand a chance in the promotion race. Another win against Island Geisha's precursor an absolutely huge game against La Armonia's Revenge. And unfortunately, against a similar strength team, we lost 1-0 and it put a huge dent in our promotion aspirations. A very valuable AFC Hampton Rangers were the opponents in the next round of the cup, but since they played a weakened team, we managed to get past them. Later, second place FC Dragos presented a very tough assignment for us. However, we managed to win 2 0 against the side we played two seasons ago in Division 2, and as a result, threw ourselves back into promotion contention. The most exciting game of the season was against FC Politchinica Bucharesti, a former Division 1 side who were once known as Super Crew, who you may have seen in previous Team of the Weeks. It was a 1-1 draw at one point, before Reita Tau Eto got himself injured. Two goals for Knights of FC, however, brought them a 3-1 lead at half-time. One more goal to make it a nervous finish at 3-2, but Celso Mota scored the decisive goal, and it was 4-2 as the final score. A very end-to-end -end game that was eventually won out by Knights. What a game. So, at the halfway point of the season, Knights were sat bang in the middle of Division 1, where we really wanted to be doing better. And we were also into the sixth round of the Ultimate League Cup. So that's better than last time when we were knocked out by Donbass Revenge. Another win over FC Dragos would put us right into the promotion picture and ensure we have a fighting chance to get promoted this season. Meanwhile, there was also the small matter of trying to beat our previous record best of the seventh round of the Ultimate League Cup. Beat FC Dragos, so we got that part down. We did need a penalty shootout to get past the outcasts, however. A team you may remember from back in season 32. It's been a long time since we last played them, nine seasons in fact, and they've got to undergo a complete rebuild under their current manager to become one of the most valuable sides in the Ultimate League. Fortunately, though, we managed to see them off. Unfortunately, however, in the next round, Armonia's revenge beat us 2 0. And at this point, I was starting to seriously consider that our league season might be over and that the cup should become the focus rather than the league. Another penalty shootout was needed against Bethnal Green FC to get into the last 16 for the first time and beat our previous best cup run. However, we managed to successfully beat Bethnal Green in a penalty shootout and as a result, progressed into the last 16 for the first time in the club's history. First ever defeat to Kyoto's Killers put us in a bit of relegation danger and ended our promotion chances, so the cut became our focus from this moment onwards. A dramatic game where we were wrapped in Van de Kreis. Knights went 2 0 ahead against Bayern de los Kaidos, who were leading Division 2D. 
They came back to equalise at 2-2, but we won at 3-2 to progress to the quarterfinals for the first time in the club's history. And all of a sudden, with some of the big names dropping up, Nice Sardonia FC had a chance to actually win the Ultima League Cup itself and actually get some silverware for all this team's work. So Dinamo Bucharest provided the quarter-final warm-up. The match went to extra time. However, deadlocked at nil-nil, Knights managed to score a decisive goal to progress to the semi-finals of the Ultima League Cup. And with the teams left in it, winning it was starting to become a real possibility. There were still some very strong teams left in the cup, of course. But we had a chance to write our name on the Ultimate League Cup trophy and give this team some silverware, meaning that if we won it, this team will be in a success no matter if we still get into the top flight or not. Starting to rest players for the cup matches meant that we were in, unfortunately drew twice to our canter this season, which is very disappointing. This is a team we should be beating twice this season. FC Le Pousseau proved to be formidable opposition and once again we needed a penalty shootout to get past them. However, we managed to do just that and have made it into the X11 Cup Final for the first time. We are in the Ultima League Cup Final and have a real chance to win our trophy. Our opponents? Oh, there's only our old Division 6 rivals Real Peeps who are currently a top flight side themselves. So this is going to be quite some game. Look at what it's come to. We had so many good encounters in the past, and now they are our biggest opponents in claiming what could be our only trophy, with they too still to seek a major honour. We did the same resting player thing against Rockabocca with a lower win bonus, and unsurprisingly, they managed to beat us quite easily. And as a result, Rockabocca are the Division 1B champions, a very, very powerful squad indeed. They were actually 16 bars in strength with a ton of 16-bar players and strength and depth. They were quite clearly the standout team in this division and deservedly won the title. Now, let's see if we can claim our big prize of the season. We have to play top-flight side Real Peeps in the Ultimate League Cup Final. This is going to have live commentary on it, so here we go. Hey then, so the captains for the biggest match in the club's history are Pim van der Kreis for Night Slidonia, the 20... 917 defender. While for real peeps, they have their captain as their goalkeeper, Harir Chudora, the 32 year old 16 skilled goalkeeper. The referee for this final is Frank Redcard, the skill 4 harshness 8 referee. Knights are in the red and yellow strip, real peeps are in the blue, light blue, and dark blue strip combined. An old rivalry. Dating back to the days of Division 6 comes full circle now as we start this Ultima League Cup final. 11 minutes played, 40 minutes played, no, no goals so far, but Knights has a possession advantage and here's a chance. It's Alviso Roma! And it's not even close. 17 minutes played and it's currently nil nil between Knights of Sardinia and Real Peeps in the Ultima League Cup final. We've got a chance for the Peeps. It's Arnold Smith with a parachute on goal and it's just, just centimetres wide. The last time we played each other was 10 seasons ago. Back then, we were rivals in Division 6 for promotion. This time, it's for a whole lot better. As we get to the fourth end of the first half, it is currently nil-nil between Knights of Sidonia and Real Peeps. One of these teams will be cup champions, but which one of them will it be? Paul Hilton is coming on for Real Peeps as Otto Winfield is replaced. And there's a card for Knights here as Racer Tower Essa has been yellow card for unsportsmanlike conduct. Let's have a chance here though, it's Azrat Zairi with the toe kick on goal. And it's made a save by Tudoran. Azrat Zairi is now a 10-bar midfielder and is starting to become more of a fixture in the team itself. We've got a free kick here for real peeps. And it's straight on goal by Charlie Alexander. And it's hit the point where the post and the crossbar meet. With him, camera has been yellow card for dangerous play here. Oh, and Devin Riley has just shot over the crossbar. No goals in normal time, so the match will be going to extra time. For 30 more minutes, will either of these teams make a decisive blow, otherwise we go to penalties. This is Joel Hilton for Real Peeps, and it's high above the goal. No goals in the first half of extra time, 15 more minutes for a decisive goal to be struck. This is Richard Mansell for Real Peeps, and it smashes into the crossbar. 
and that's a yellow card for Huberto Pazat. The goals in normal time, so we're going to be going to penalties to decide this cup final. The 41st Ultimate League Cup final is going to be decided between two teams who never won a trophy on a penalty shootout. So without further ado, let us get underway. This is Charlie Alexander for Real Peeps. And he scores. Charlie Alexander for Real Peeps has struck the first penalty. And now it is going to be the turn of Knights to take the penalties. This is Pim van der Kreis on the penalty spot. He is our penalty specialist. And he scores. Knights of Sidonia have got level in the shootout with Pim van der Kreis's penalty. Now it's the turn of Real Peeps again. Jeremiah McNally on the penalties. And he scores too. So, all converted penalties so far. Jeremiah McNally for real peeps. Knight's turn now. Aquila Santa Maria on the penalties. And he scores. So, both sides have scored two penalties apiece so far. Real peeps have got their penalties taken through Charlie Alexander and Jeremiah McNally. And now it's Kingsley Silver's turn. And he scores too. Kingsley Silver. Gives Real Peeps a third goal. Knights need to score to keep up with them. So it is now the turn of Salsa Motor, an ever reliable goal scorer. Can he put it into the back of the net? He can. Salsa Motor makes it 3 3. A third goal in this penalty shootout for both sides. Arnold Smith now for Real Peeps has a chance to keep this going. And he misses. Knights of Sidonia have the chance to take the lead in the penalty shootout. And Raymond Hargreaves. Has a chance to get the lead in the shootout. And he misses the goal too. Wow. What a dramatic development in this penalty shootout. As Huberto Pazat takes a penalty for real peeps. And it's saved by Ant Connolly. Wow. This is some turn up. Because now Alvita Roma can put Knights back in front. And give them the lead in the shootout for the first time. And it's handled by Puri Chudoran. Can you absolutely believe this? This is quite some penalty shootout so far. And now it is turned for Lambert McInnesby, who puts them back in front in the shootout in what is effectively now sudden death. Knights have a chance here. Ant Connolly to take the penalty. He's saved the last one. Can he score? Yes, he can. Ant Connolly beats his fellow goalkeeper, Heria Tudorin, to make it 4-4 in the shootout. And now it is the turn of Joel Hilton to take the penalty for real peeps. And it's always hit the corner flag. Knights have a chance to win the Ultimate League Cup. The honour goes to Pierre Hesslink. Save! What a dramatic penalty shootout this has turned out to be. Alvin Hay now can put real peeps in front in the shootout. And he scores. Wow, was that a real missed opportunity for Knights of Sidonia FC there? We have to score now. The pressure is now on Racist Out Essa. Can he score this penalty? Yes, he can. Race it out, Etta. Makes up for Pierre Pestling's wasted opportunity to try and win the Ultimate League Cup. And now it is 5-5 in the shootout. And Haria Tudorin is taking the penalty for real peeps. And it's not even close. That was a terrible penalty. And nice of the chance to win the Ultimate League Cup. Ibrahim Kamra, the unlikely figure to take the penalty. Can he score? Yes, he can. Knights of Sidonia FC have won the Ultimate League Cup. The best achievement by the club to date. What an incredible penalty shootout that was. But what matters in the end is that we are ultimately champions. And all of that work to get all of that players built up has resulted in a major trophy as winners of the Ultimate League Cup. And I got so excited that I forgot to mention the fact that it wasn't even the Ultimate League itself we won it was just the cup but even so this is still a major trophy on our repertoire and i'm very very glad to see that knights have been able to win a major trophy in the ultimate league pim van der Kreese was the man of the match for knights of the fc while haria chudoran was the man of the match for real peeps the season ended with a 4-0 thrashing of fk spaj sernica and so this is what the final table looks like more importantly however we have now won a major trophy in the ultimate league and so this series labelled a road to glory was effectively that now. We have our glory. 